and every one of you, Grenada Caracol, PT Martinique, bless up all your whole cells. It is another good day to have a good day. Wednesday, February 10th, 2021. Happy to have you joining us on Good Morning Grenada. Those of you on the GBN Grenada Broadcasting Network's Facebook page, the Grenada Broadcasting Network's YouTube channel, the website www.gbn.gd, GBN TV, channel 7, 11 and 20. Good morning to the listeners of Classic 105.5, 105.9, Hot 98.5, 98.7 and the folks joining us on go to fets facebook page always a pleasure to have you thank you for your time your listenership your viewership bless up your whole self to the folks joining us across the caribbean whichever part of the region you are it's been a while hold on wait hold on let's try this <clears throat> To the folks joining us in Trinidad and Tobago, Dominica, St. Lucia, St. Vincent, Antigua, Anguilla, Barbados, Jamaica, Haiti, Dominican Republic, Belize, Montserrat, St. Kitts, Nevis, Puerto Rico, the BVI, the ABC Islands, Aru, I say ABC Islands, okay, hold on, wait, <laughs> I'm missing people, I'm missing people, US Virgin Islands, Tortola, I know I'm missing more people, I'm missing more people, hold on, hold on. No, man, I think I get most, most of us. I get most of us. I get most of us, man. Don't do me them thing. I get most of us. The brain ain't so bad this morning. I get most of us. Thank you so much for joining us. A good Grenadian 473 morning, Caribbean morning to each and every one of you. International viewers and listeners tuning in from the United States, the UK, Switzerland, Sweden, Canada, Germany, Australia, the People's Republic of China, North and South Korea, Afghanistan, Iraq, Iran, Bahrain. Where else am I missing? I miss, I know I'm missing real people. Belgium, mm, coming through with Belgium in the dance, hold on. <laughs> the North Pole, Santa Claus, big up your whole self this morning. Listen, I have to wake up the brain and this is an opportunity for me to do just that. Work the brain cells, try and name as many countries as you can. Wake up the brain cells on this terrific, wonderful Wednesday morning. Good morning to each and every one of you tuning. Good morning, good afternoon, good night. Hope you will have a good day or having a good day have had a good day. That covers everybody for sure. All right. Thank you so much for tuning in to Good Morning Grenada. Let's do this. It's time for this morning's Word of the Day. This morning's Word of the Day is caveat. Caveat. C-A-V-E-A-T. Caveat. It's a noun which means a warning and joining one from certain acts or practices, an explanation to interpretation, a modifying or cautionary detail to be considered when evaluating, interpreting, or doing something, or a legal warning to a judicial officer to suspend a proceeding until the opposition has a hearing. This morning's word of the day is caveat, C-A-V-E-A-T-E. You may be familiar with the old saying, caveat emptor, nowadays loosely translated as, let the buyer beware. In the 16th century, this adage was imparted as a safeguard for the seller to allow the buyer to examine the item, for example, a horse, before the sale is completed. So the seller can't be blamed if the item turns out to be unsatisfactory. Caveat in Latin means let him beware and comes from the verb which means to be on guard. The word caution is another descendant of the word caviar. This morning's word of the day is caveat, C-A-V-E-A-T, a noun which means a warning and joining one from certain acts or practices, an explanation to prevent misinterpretation, a legal warning to a judicial officer to suspend a proceeding until the opposition has a hearing. An example of the use of the word this morning, still there are caveats to the numbers for one student who leaves the district after their freshman year to be homeschooled. Another example of the use of the word, while she welcomed the increase, it came with a caveat as business owners would hire fewer staff, putting increased pressure on existing workers. 
This morning's word of the day, caveat, C-A-V-E-A-T-E, a a noun which means a warning and joining one from certain acts or practices, an explanation to prevent misinterpretation, a legal warning to judicial officer to suspend the proceeding until the opposition has a hearing. That's this morning's word of the day. And as you go about your wonderful Wednesday, some thoughts or some inspirational thoughts to get you through your day. Stay hopeful. You never know what this day may bring. Stay hopeful. You never know what this day may bring. You never know. You may expect one thing and it comes out the other way. Or you may have no expectations at all and the day goes better than you even hoped for. Just stay hopeful, be positive, have a positive mindset, do what you gotta do and things will just fall into place. Stay hopeful, you never know what this day may bring. All right, let's see what's celebrated today, February 10th, 2021. Today it is... This is, um, what should I call it? This is something that is very useful to us, especially in the Caribbean. Today it is Umbrella Day. Umbrella Day. Dolly Parton once said that if you want the rainbow, you've got to put up with the rain. Although she never said anything about how to put up with the rain, for generations, the method of choice has been the umbrella. As part of many cultures since ancient times, umbrellas have a storied history worth commemorating. So on February 10th, we celebrate Umbrella Day. It casts a little shade. The day honors one of the most useful inventions. Not only does it keep us dry from the rain, it also protects us from the heat of the sun. Umbrellas can be used as a fashion accessory as well. While the umbrella is primarily practical, they also decorate cocktails. These brightly colored paper umbrellas make for fun party favors, especially when visiting sunny locations. It is Umbrella Day. On my way into the studio this morning, I saw a little dream. So maybe the rains, the heavens knew that today should be a day that we use the umbrella on Umbrella Day. So make sure you walk with it just in case the rain mean business. I don't know what has been happening in the last half an hour or so since I've been sitting here. You never know. Walk with the umbrella, especially on Umbrella Day. Even if it's sunshine, a matter of fact, because it has many uses. It's Umbrella Day. Everything has a day. Hold on. Blossom Day soon come. Hold on, give me space, Ali. Give me space. Umbrella day. Soon reach by here, so. All right, information time. Let's see. All right. Um, as I said yesterday, the Grenada Broadcasting Network will be broadcasting matches of the CG Insurance Super 50 Cricket Tournament right here on Classic 105.5, 105.9, Hot 98.5, 98.7. The match scheduled for today. Barbados Pride takes on the Leeward Islands and that game is scheduled to bowl off at 1.30 p.m. right here on Classic. So be sure to tune in for the cricket in action. 1.30 p.m. Barbados Pride takes on the Leeward Islands in today's match. Uh, the tournament I uh, think there is one game a day one game a day. Most of them are scheduled for 1.30 some of them are scheduled for 9am but I would keep you updated as to what matches taking place what days and at what time. Blossom is here to serve. Blossom is here to serve. So for today's game, Barbados Pride takes on Leeward Islands, 1.30 p.m. Tune in to Classic 105.5, 105.9, Hot 98 point, No, just Classic. Classic 105.5, 105.9 for the Super 50 Cricket Tournament, Barbados Pride, Leeward Islands. And finally, before we take the break, this morning's post-cabinet briefing. Remember, on Monday, there was no cabinet meeting. So cabinet meeting was held yesterday, which means cabinet briefing will be held today, Wednesday. This morning's cabinet briefing, scheduled to begin at 10 a.m., will be facilitated by officials from the Ministry of Health and Social Security. They did not specify which individuals, but it's the ministry. That's um, um, Minister Steele. It could be the permanent secretary. It could be the chief. Uh, uh, health officer, CMO, chief medical officer. Um, but it's the officials from the Ministry of Health. Maybe it's an update on COVID-19. Let's see what happens. The post-cabinet briefing starts at 10 a.m. So keep that in mind. You never know what the news, what post-cab would be bringing. Just had a hope for the best. 
All right, let's see. It is now quarter to seven. It's time for us to get ready for the news. For those of you on radio, we bring you the morning edition of news. And for those of you on our visual platforms, highlights of last evening's newscast. This is Good Morning Grenada on Classic GBN Hot 98. We'll be right back. Count your blessings. It's a good day to have a good day. Good evening. This is GBN's News at 7. Police ruled out excessive alcohol consumption as the main cause of this weekend's vehicular accidents at different locations throughout the country. Most of these accidents are considered minor as no lives were lost. Details from Chris Lena John. 28 accidents recorded between Saturday and Monday alone. However, police say alcohol was not to blame this time. Speaking to Inspector Rondel Batiste in charge of administration and operations attached to the traffic department of the Royal Grenada Police Force, he believes a lack of focus while driving was a major contributor. All of the, the accidents was uh, mainly to driving without due care and attention. Um, what we are happy about, it was nothing in relation to driving under the influence of alcohol or anything to do with speeding, you know, and that's a, that's a plus. It's just that some in number of the cases, drivers not applying due care in the process. And I must say um, the officers from the traffic department throughout the trial and state, their, their presence would have contributed significantly to a deterrent with reference to persons being even tempted to, to drive under the influence of alcohol because the officers were out there with a better license kit and, and prepared for, to, to engage persons. And um, I think we would have solved our purpose because it was really a preventative measure. And the stats have clearly indicated because what would have resulted as the causes of the accident have nothing to do with speeding or, as I said, driving under the, uh, under the influence. 27 of the 28 accidents were considered minor, according to the inspector. However, police are investigating the lone serious accident, which occurred in the vicinity of St. Paul's last evening. The driver and one of two occupants were taken to the general hospital by ambulance for medical examination. The other occupant, according to the report, fled the scene. However, the police were able to catch up with him. The one serious accident, which happened as recent as last night on the St. Paul's public road where a vehicle would have run off the road while traveling along the St. Paul's public road and that vehicle ended up on the Lavery public road traveling about 150 to 200 feet. Yeah, at, at that time the vehicle would have had about three occupants. On arrival, on arrival at the scene, the police officers from St. Paul's police station would have visited the scene of that accident and on arrival they met the driver and one of the other two occupants. The, the, the third occupant was not met at the scene of the accident. In terms of damage to the vehicle, the vehicle was severely, severely damaged. So that's why it was categorized as a serious accident in relation to damage this caused to the vehicle because of injury. The officer lauded the members of the public for being responsible with their alcohol consumption and less speeding and urged the motoring public to drive with due care and attention and beware of other road users. Meanwhile, three persons remain hospitalized following Friday's bus accident in Bolio, St. George. Three females and one male. According to the police report, they are likely to be released from hospital by the end of this week. Christina John, GBN News. Police are investigating the circumstances surrounding the death of a 53-year-old man whose body was discovered on Monday on a beach in St. David. Valentine Lewis, a.k.a. Machine, was discovered Monday on Rukin Bay around 6.30 p.m. According to reliable information reaching the GBN, the body was found by a fisherman in the area who summoned the St. David's police to the scene. 
GBN spoke with a relative of the deceased, Barbara, on Tuesday, who told us her last contact with Machine was on the day before the unfortunate incident. She says he will be remembered for his unique songs. Morning, I heard of a passing. I didn't really know. I don't know what caused it. They said they met him by the, on the beach. It was a, <clears throat> what to say? He was a okay person. Always make you laugh. Everybody knew him, always going by the beach. He was right me down to Friday. Yeah, that's the last I see of him. Help you do anything, you know? You call him, he will do anything for you. Ra ra. <laughs> Machine, po po, a da da. You know, everybody likes to hear that song. He always make that song. Less than three weeks ago, the body of another St. David resident was found pinned to the ground by a fallen tree. Police are investigating this incident. Crystalina John, GBN News. So unfortunate. Ambulance said to have been stopped by police officers while taking a patient to the general hospital during the early hours of Sunday. We find out more in this report. Should an emergency vehicle be stopped by police during curfew hours? Information circulated that an ambulance en route to the general hospital Sunday morning with a patient was stopped by police officers at one of the roadblocks in St. George. A voice note and a video were sent to GBN by a concerned citizen who stated that the road in the direction to the hospital was blocked, with police placed cones and officers manning the roadblock. However, the male individual said what transpired thereafter was a surprise to him. We can move, we, we proceed, we get all other entrance, all other officers blocked with cones. Right? We proceed, we go on, put on the thing. We can pick up the patient. Up in Madiga, about, uh, at least about 10 minutes, or it could be eight, 10 minutes after we push it back to the hospital with the patient. We say we, we need to pass because we have emergency. The person said, What kind of emergency do you have? And he said, Get on. Proceed. He came. If you could stop because we, I came up from the vehicle to go and take out the one of the, um, the cone and you refer the vehicle pass to continue going to the direction of the hospital, Lucas Street. And the police said, if I do that, you arrest me. So we stopped. We couldn't make our way to no, nowhere. We stopped. And there was an argument between we and the police, which I feel is ridiculous because, come on, we do our job. Officer in charge of administration and operation at the traffic department, Rondel Batiste, in explaining to our news desk, says what is shown in the video is not the real facts of the matter before adding that not much information could have been shared as the matter is presently under investigation. He said, however, he is pleased with the information supplied to him. What we are seeing in the video is total contrast to the information we have before us. But at some point in time, the, the, the media will um, get more, much more information in relation to the video that are circulating from the CRD department, which is responsible for disseminating information to the media. But I, I can, as I said, what we are seeing in the video is total contrast to the information I have before me examining those reports from the different officers. Definitely get, get clarity. There will definitely be a, a, a closure to that investigation. And I, I, from where I sit, I am happy with what I see from the reports from, from, from our end. Lena John, GBN News. Following Prime Minister Dr. Keith Mitchell's call for the establishment of a social fund to assist people impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic, GBN took to the streets of St. George's to garner a response from the public. The Prime Minister is, pro is promising no government involvement in its handling. Jared Joseph has that development. The Prime Minister, in his national address to Mark Grenada's 47th anniversary of independence, has proposed an idea he believes can help people in need. I plan to present a proposal to our social partners and by implication the country for the creation of a social fund that will be used to help the most vulnerable in our society. The concept is that every one of us who is working will contribute 
to this fund. I would lead by example, contributing a portion far above anyone else of my salary every month to help those in need. And I'll be encouraging my cabinet colleagues to do the same. Similarly, I would be encouraging everyone who's able to make a contribution to do so. However, though such an idea is welcomed, it received the following response when GBM panned the streets in the town of St. George on Tuesday. What do I want the Prime Minister to do? I want him to pay them teachers and them. Pay them hard-working teachers and them and stop talking stupidity and the ministers and them. You understand? Pay them teachers and them. In my days growing up, teachers always get the money on time, no problem. Why no? Why no? Prime Minister Mitchell, while making the proposal, said government ministers will not have any dealings with the management of this fund if established. Members of government will have no involvement in implementing this fund. The way I envision it, the social partners will establish an independent committee to manage and disburse these funds acquired through this effort. These were the other responses gathered as GB engaged the pulse of the people on the proposed idea by the Prime Minister. There is something good, is something good. who have helped, you know, uh, who have helped. I, I, I think the money should come from the transformation fund, right? That's where the money should come from. I think that's where it should come from. No, well, I, I think that's supposed to be a choice of making. It's a, it's a choice. You understand? So yeah. if, it's, if it's a choice and you're doing something for the better of others, then yeah, I find that's reasonable. Yeah, it's a good thing. Yeah, it's a good thing. Right. You know, because we ain't dealing with one and we're dealing on a whole. You understand? To expand the human race. So I think that's, that's a good idea. I am Gerard Joseph for GBN News. Welcome back. From dislodged stones to falling tree, a large mango tree earlier today came crashing down in the Munich, Munich area, close to the Holy Innocence RC School. Reports reaching, reaching GBN is that the tree blocked vehicular traffic and destroyed a small portion of a house. There were no... There were no reports of injuries. Over the past few weeks, there have been several reports of massive boulders dislodging from the hillside. The latest occurrence was on Sunday when a boulder made its way into the middle of the main road of Bailey's Bacalet in St. David on the Red Gate stretch slope. Disaster preparedness is a concern for the entire region, as the effect of disasters are often severe and can lead to loss and destruction. The construction of NADMA's new emergency operations center and warehouse in Karakou, Grenada continues to strengthen its disaster management and preparedness efforts. More in this report. The United States Southern Command's Humanitarian Assistance Project provided $2.7 million U.S. million for the construction of an emergency operations center in Kariku. Following the sod turning ceremony in November 2020, construction has been ongoing and the center is expected to improve disaster management and preparedness for the Sister Isle and, by extension, the entire state of Grenada. Community Program Officer for Nadma Kariku, Ben date said the project has been progressing speedily and is now in the stages of completion. They're working speedily. Um, they're doing quite quite good. Um, based on the time they started, I have seen quite a lot of work so far. Seems like they are in the closing phase. Um, I guess they'll be doing some electrical work now and maybe hopefully some painting job. So it has been going good thus far. Based on the information received from Solcom consultant most likely to be completed sometime in March. She said it will have a significant impact on the operation of the agency as they continue to deal with emergencies, disasters and environmental crises. We will be getting a new emergency operations center as well as um, a bigger warehouse facility and this of course will aid in better communication as well as decision making in the event of a crisis and also would 
assist us in training personnel to respond better to emergencies. And of course, CARICO, of course, will be much better able to respond to emergency as it relates to various hazards. Date said the new facility is expected to increase the communication capabilities of the CARICO-based sub-office. The facility will bring great benefit to us in terms of communication. I think we have been lacking in the area of communication, communication equipment. Um, as you can see, we do not have much equipment here as yet. Uh, we are hoping um, that when we go into the new building, the new facility will be better equipped to communicate from a national level, from a local level, and even on a regional level as it relates to communication throughout. And uh, we're looking at maybe e e e equipment such as VHF radios, CB radios, um, sub phones, and those kind of things that will be able to assist us to respond timely in the event of an emergency. The United States government also contributed U.S. $3.9 million to fund the construction of a new NADMA headquarters in Mongelou, St. George. Trelana Charles, GBN News. And D.C. caretaker for Karakou and Petit Martinique, Tevin Andrews, says a scaled-down version of Karakou Carnival should have been held this year, rather than total cancellation of the festival. Beverly Talisford has more. NDC caretaker for Karaku and Piti Martinik, Tevin Andrews, calls for governance on the sister isles. As he says, just as Spice Mass 2020 hosted virtual events, so too should Kayak Mass 2021. He insists that the cancellation of this year's events reflects a lack of creativity on the part of the organizers. Andrews believes that a scaled-down version of events should have been held this year. Of course, because of COVID-19, I don't expect us to to continue doing the things we, we were doing in terms of have, having big mega um, events where a lot of people have to gather. But there are certain things that you can do to scale down the Caracol Carnival to ensure that it happens, especially when it comes to giving um, young artists or the artists uh, a platform to, to, to show off their creativity and so forth. Um, I think that should happen. We, in 2020, Blossom, though the COVID struck then, there was events happening. You had the Soka Monarch and Calypso and so on. It wasn't canceled. It was scaled down. Likewise, the similar thing could have happened here on the Sister Isles. You could have had a virtual Calypso and Soka competition. You could have a virtual Shakespeare mass competition among the villages and so on, instead of canceling everything. Andrew says creativity should be applied to help deal with the economic impact that No Kayak Mass 2021 has had on the island and its residents. He says while the health and safety of the people remain paramount, the economic and social aspects of their lives should also be taken into consideration, especially the people directly impacted by the annual event. And Caracol Carnival and the culture and the artists and the art form um, will, will be able to sustain itself and, and grow and blossom. Yeah, that is, that is what, <laughs> that's what I believe that needed to happen instead of the cancellation of it. It just goes to show that we have no leadership and we, we, we really have people that, that lack vision and ideas. So I was very, I was very saddened by it. It, it, it will affect everybody everybody it affect from the from the from the taxi to the busmen to the vendors to the shopkeepers to the supermarket owners you just name it it affects everybody and i believe that certain things could have could have been done to still allow certain activities and events to take place so the vendors and, and the taxi men and whoever and, and so on still make some money may not be business as usual but at least to generate some sort of income the NDC caretaker says it's not too late and is appealing to the Carnival Committee to rethink their decision of cancelling Kayak Mass 2021. Andrews was a guest on GBN's To The Point program on Tuesday morning. For GBN News, Beverly Tellisford. Oil down was the main dish in the pots and plates of Grenadians on the weekend as the nation celebrated its 47th anniversary of independence. Our news crew journeyed to the northeastern part of the island, that's the island of Grenada, to get a first-hand view of how people were celebrating 47 years of independence. Jared Joseph has the details. 
our first stop along the eastern, the northern main road, was at Longwall in River Antoine in St. Patrick. There we interacted with a young man who was keen to describe his plate of oil dung. Yes, 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 man. In this, in this oil dung, we have the wonderful smokerine. We have the crayfish, as you can see. The wonderful, magnificent crayfish is well done. We have the breadfruit locally. Also the fig and the yam. Oh, we can't forget the yam. You know we are the yam there. You know, it was cooked by someone special. I can't, I can't, I can't tell you who is that. But you know, we have the chef over right there. You know, can't forget the chef. And you know, of course, we have the nice, you know, we had the dumpling. Of course, we had to put the dumpling and the liquor, the liquor. You know, we had the liquor kalalu there. <laughs> Many of the communities were sparsely populated as many journeyed to selective spots or beaches to enjoy Independence Day with family and friends. The popular lemon spot was lined with vehicles as the people we met were having a wonderful time. <laughs> I think everything. <laughs> everything. I don't spray nothing. Look, biggest pie on the island. The biggest man have it. Livera Beach has become a secluded and trendy spot for family and friends, and it did not disappoint as GBN toured the area. In the island, we have pig tail, pig snout, back and neck, turkey, callaloo, pumpkin, breadfruit, dashing, yam, fig, all grenada dish. Today is about family and friends. So we out here, everybody, my wife, the guy who just he said, shove the fire's wife. And we all up here with our family, enjoying ourselves, come to the beach just relax, spend the day, and after that, back home. Now we have coffee for 10, so we out after that. The family atmosphere was palpable, with fun, games, and music. Hey, family is the most important thing in this life of Especially my family is the most important thing. So we always out, we always enjoy it, despite the coffee, despite the COVID, despite the lockdown. Make every Sunday, like this Sunday, family day. So we always out, whether it's this beach or our next one, we always out here. The GBN crew even got to enjoy some sumptuous oil lung from the St. James Posse at Livera Beach. I'm, I'm from St. James, St. Andrews, and I'm here with my, my team. That's my boy, the guys who are normally hang out with. I mean, decided to just come out today and just have a time. Just have a, my dad, my uncle from England is here, everybody just here. They just decided to have a good time, but we prepare this from home. This spot is, I would say, Everybody's spot. We have the pork, we have the manicu, we have the chicken, turkey. But this one, is, this small part over on this side is we call it Adventist spot. It's only chicken only. <laughs> it's only chicken only. <laughs> but this one is for everybody who just like a uh, real tasty oil. Look, this is what it's all about. I am Gerard Joseph for GBN News. That just made me hungry all over again. Let's move over to our social buzz. Let's see what's been creating a buzz on social media. Cholana Charles has been looking around the platform. This is Social Buzz, where we shine a light on the thoughts and concerns of our online audience. Grenada has celebrated its 47th anniversary of independence. During the annual celebrations, many Grenadians often take the time to reflect on the history of the country they call home. On GBN's Good Morning Grenada radio program, our online and listening audience shared their opinions on what they think has been the island's greatest accomplishments over the past 47 years and which areas need improvement. Food security and respect for fellow men. That's the greatest accomplishment. Uh, somebody else says, over the past few years, we have maintained quite a peaceful country. Our violent crime rate is quite low. I would like to see an end to the over-dependency on tourism. 
47 years of reversing. We had Expo, we had a water parade, we had we had a farm in Manhattan, we had a sugar factory, we had a soap factory, all them things gone. When people should be getting work now to do. So 47 years of reversing. The intended lowering of his um, salary or his monthly allowance. And he asking the um, the others to follow him. That's one of the greatest likely achievements to take place in the history of Grenada. Yes, well, I would say big up to Grenada in terms of sports and culture. You know, we have had international winners. But in terms of, of improvement, we need to, in my opinion, focus a little more on the productive se sector, agriculture and manufacturing, so that our import bill can be much lower than it is. I would like to see improvement in the health centers and the um, and fire service, the fire trucks in, in them police stations. I think the day of the revolution was the greatest improvement we ever had, and it happened in three and a half years. And after that, we failed in many ways after that era because of lack of transparency. As another improvement needed is for Grenadians to write their own constitution by Grenadians for Grenadians. Our greatest achievement is the importation of a lot of bacchanet and Chinese. Have a good day. That's it for tonight's social buzz. If you would like to have your thoughts and concerns shared, be sure to comment on GBN's Facebook page. From the thought process to the visual impact, it's time to take a peek through the GBN ISAW lens. A good eye captures all. GBN ISAW is brought to you by Clairvision. You know us, but we knew. You feel at home with every visit. An experienced team offering personalized courtier service and trendy brand name lifestyle products. We're changing the vision care landscape one customer at a time. Clear Vision Eye Center. People and technology coming together to help you see the world with a clearer vision. Tonight, our ISO reporter captured the scene of an accident which resulted in a car flipping completely off the road, landing on its back. There were no reported major injuries and the driver was still at the scene unharmed. Residents in the area gathered around to view the accident, one of many which occurred over the weekend. Send us your photo and video submissions via WhatsApp on 405-3052 or our other social media platforms. Now we can stay safe while at the same time reducing our budget to maintain a clean and a safe environment at our home, school, office, church, or even on the bus. Fortune Foods has gone a long way to source premium products that are at least 30 to 50% less than other brands. That's right, 30 to 50% cheaper than other brands. We have a multi-purpose, 80% strength liquid sanitizer for cleaning surfaces that is also safe on hands, as well as 70 to 75% gel sanitizers, available in one gallon and smaller sizes. Plus, when you buy in bulk, you save even more. Right now, every dollar counts. Be wise, sanitize with Fortune Foods' range of sanitizing products. Distributed by Fortune Foods Company Limited, Tempe St. George's. Telephone 435-2247. Total is one of the world's largest oil companies with a top quality line of lubricants. Total Lubricants has a full product line from passenger cars, motorcycle, heavy industrial equipment, mining, trucking, agriculture, and manufacturing machines and vehicles. Total Lubricants, winning championships in motorsports, including Formula One and World Rally Championships. Total Lubricants are available at all Rubis service stations, leading automotive shops, and distributed by Huggins. Do you know what time it is? 
You guessed right, it's detox time again at Nirvana Natural Health Clinic, Detox Center, and Natural Health Store. Purchase our seven day cleansing pack for only $500. Includes everything you need for a complete total body cleanse. Cleanse your blood, kidney, liver, and colon. This cleanse will help you lighten up and get rid of the excess. Also available are our special product detox combo pack for only $100. Try our single detox products starting from $40. Check us out now. Belmont St. George's, close to the Fall Edge area. Or call us on 231-6642-449-7753 or 418-7115. Nirvana Natural Health Clinic, Detox Center, and Natural Health Store. Detox, your way to health. I'm reaching my dreams with GOT. They're the ones for me. I'm reaching my dreams with GOT. They're the ones for me. Since 1983, they've been solving the country, and we like all their finance and giving the people what they want, what they need, what they love. Come and join the family that's here for you all the way. From birth to graduation, your first job to your home and your car through your golden years. The GT Credit Union has been actively supporting nation building through its many sponsorships and programs including Financial Literacy Quiz, Pass the Torch Calypso Program, Junior Cooperatives in Secondary Schools, CPEA and the TAMCC Grants. The Credit Union has helped many people make their dreams come true. Let them help you with yours. You don't have to be a teacher to be a member. So what are you waiting for? GUT Credit Union It's where you belong How going on, boy? Hey, hey, good old things. How you Daisy? Yeah. Boy, line, boy. Your house looking a real good day. Boy, it's thanks to the hardworking and professional staff at the Housing Authority of Grenada. They handled me real nice. They did my plan, they did the construction, and I didn't even have to worry about that thing. They were there with me every step of it, supervising the job, asking me about my concerns, giving me feedback as the house took shape. They were there from start to finish, and even put the keys in the palm of my hand. I give them an A++ for customer service. Oh, it's people from housing bad, boy. Boy, not bad. Excellent. If you're thinking about constructing your home, why not consult the Housing Authority of Grenada? You could visit them right down in the Sandino Complex or give them a call 440-1015 or 440-1016 or check out their website hag473.com. They go handle you. They go jog your blocks. They go draw your plan. They go tote your materials. <laughs> hey man, where you going? The Housing Authority of Grenada is your choice for affordable housing and a stress-free construction experience. Running low on groceries? Why not visit realvalueiga.com and experience our new online shopping platform. Place your order, then go out and enjoy your day to spend more time with friends and family. Delivery available within select locations or in store pickup available. Sounds simple, right? It is. Stress less, live more with Real Value IGA Online Store, where good food begins. Imagine your day without having to wait in line, without having to write at every store, without touching the pen everyone else used, having your info exposed to everyone. Sounds great, huh? Well, it's possible. Here is Teda. With Teda, you download once, register once, and just scan to check in everywhere. No hassle, no forms, no hold up. Simple and easy. Teda lets you explore, discover new places, new products, and new experiences. What are you waiting for? Get Tether for free from your app store today and enjoy contactless convenience. Get Ruby Gas. Get cooking. Ruby Gas. Clean, safe, and reliable LPG is the perfect solution for your commercial and everyday needs. For cooking at home or barbecuing, choose Ruby Gas LPG cylinders. Available in a variety of sizes from 20 to 100 pound cylinders. Ruby Gas LPG. Clean, safe, reliable. Are you cooking with Ruby Gas? Get Ruby's. Get going. 
Do you know what time it is? You guessed right, it's detox time again at Nirvana Natural Health Clinic, Detox Center, and Natural Health Store. Purchase our seven day cleansing pack for only $500. Includes everything you need for a complete total body cleanse. Cleanse your blood, kidney, liver, and colon. This cleanse will help you lighten up and get rid of the excess. Also available are our special product detox combo pack for only $100. Try our single detox products starting from $40. Check us out now. Belmont St. George's, close to the Fall Edge area. Or call us on 231-6642-449-7753 or 418-7115. Nirvana Natural Health Clinic, Detox Center, and Natural Health Store. Detox, your way to health. Exploring the beaten trails, discovering uncharted terrain, connecting with people and places, giving a renewed appreciation for our flora and fauna. We are out and about, from the crystal white sands of Grandin's Beach to the cascading and majestic temple of Concord Falls, the meandering of the St. John's River, or our undulating mountain ranges. We are out and about. Saturdays live on GBN Television, our Facebook page, and our YouTube channel. Out and about, rediscovering the untamed beauty of Spice Country. Welcome back to Good Morning Grenada. Sloki, I can't see. <laughs> okay, all right. Good morning and welcome back to Good Morning Grenada. My monitor give him my issues in the dance here. Thank you so much for joining us on Good Morning Grenada. Those of you who are just joining us and those of you who stuck with us, thank you for your patience. We are trying to get the technology to work with us. Happy that you stuck with us. Joining us once again on the program is clinical psychologist Shauna Coffey, and she's here again as we continue this series, getting ad acc acclimatized with these covid times and homeschooling and getting um, into the groove of what this time means for our students and our parents as well. Good morning once again, Miss Coffey. How you do? Good morning. I am great. How is everyone? Hopefully everybody is good. Technology doesn't always work with us, but we're glad that it finally settled itself. So thank you once again. <laughs> So welcome. this morning we're talking resilience um, for uh, our students, our parents during these covid times and how we can continue to persevere and get through the trying times until we can get back to some form of normalcy in the meantime. So as we go about resilience, to first of all, let's look at a broad uh, definition for what we mean when we say resilience during these times. Well, resilience um, is the psychological strength a person garners or harnesses 
during a time of uh, stress, trauma, or an impact that has any kind of spiritual reflection that will change the way you feel or the way you think about yourself. And what tips can you okay. give? Um, yeah, go, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. So resilience comes from deep within. It is something that has to be fostered. It is something that has to be understood and you have to embrace resilience. Resilience doesn't just fall from the sky and you don't get it by osmosis. Um, some people's resilience points and levels could be very low because they've never had an experience to be resilient about, right? But people who have had experiences to be resilient about, you'll find their resilience points as being very high. So today I'm going to introduce the image of a balancing scale. If people remember years ago when you did science, maybe about grade five or standard four, you had something in the middle to balance and it was called a fulcrum. Everybody has a different fulcrum level. Depending on what you put on the left and what you put on the right, which one is heavier, that determines your resilience core or your resilience center. So for example, right now we have some high stress levels. Well, let's say we put them on the left. So we have things like death from COVID, loved one dying, school closure, unemployment, right? These are heightened mounting stressors. We put that on the left. And these are what you call negative outcomes. Then on the right, we'll put positive relationships. So stuff like prayer, um, spiritual strength, supportive family members, um, friendly neighbors, uh, community members, the school system, and uh, those can be positive outcomes. Now, Blossom, if we have the ones on the left mounting and the ones on the right not functioning, then we have an imbalanced scale. And that is where your resilience would have to build more. If your negative outcomes outweigh the positive outcomes, you need way more resilience than if the scale was tipped in the other direction. So what kind of mentality do you need to persevere and be resilient during these times for both parents and students? Absolutely. Great question. So the mentality you need to have is one where you understand what's happening. You see, without comprehension and understanding, you can't embrace anything. If I don't see a person coming to me to hug, I can't embrace them because it's be, it'll be like embracing the wind. So um, you have to embrace what's happening. These are COVID-19 times. It's a pandemic. It's a deadly virus. I've seen all the stats. I've read the information. Every day in the news, I get updates of the OECS, I get updates of, you know, the US, I get updates from Canada. We even get cabinet briefing updates, right, for what's happening in local. And what that does is that puts us in a place where we understand what we should be doing. So when you understand your role and your responsibility in a time like this, Blossom, it helps to build your resilience. So when you understand, you embrace, you assess, you evaluate the situation because right now you your own home scientist, right? Excuse me. And when you do that, your mind is in a better place to make a decision as to what to do, what not to do, how things should flow and how things shouldn't flow. So the mindset you need to have is an open mindset, one that's open to receive information, one that's open to decode and assess information, right? That's the main mindset you need to have. Many people say I have a strong mindset, but really what is that? You know, a strong mindset is a work in progress, really and truly. Yeah? So you have to be open to receive and you have to know what you're hearing. You know, it's sad to say this, eh? but some people, you can bring them to a blackboard and you can show them one plus one is two. And in their mind, because the number 11 comprises of two ones, They'll think one plus one is 11. 
right? So resilience has to be with looking at the facts, accepting the facts, and making a decision to decide what am I going to do about this information which I now have. That is the mindset you need to have to build and to foster resilience. Um, it's kind of simple to you know, personally do things to be resilient in these times and to persevere. But how about collaborating? Because with parents and, and students and their children, you need to sometimes come together, especially the younger the child is, the more you need to collaborate. So how can we both work together to get this results that we, de we need from the process and everybody's hearing everybody? Right, so what we need to do, Blossom, we need to see it as a fruit basket, right? When you have a fruit basket, you don't just have citrus or sweet fruits. You have a combination of both. Some fruits are acidic and you can't mix them. Some fruits are very sweet, so they need to be mixed. Then you have some fruits that are like guavas or strawberries. Um, some of them are tart. So it's a combination of a little sweet and a little um, sour, okay? And collaboration is like that. We each have different personalities. But what is unique and what binds us together is the fact that we need to get through this, we need to survive, and we need to finish strong. So if those are the objectives with which you come to the table, then you will see results, you will see benefits. You cannot um, divide. Ah, uh, There's no divide and conquering in, in this. We have to ask questions. We have to talk to the people we think know. And even the people we think know, if they don't know, it's an opportunity for them to say, well, you know, I don't know too much about this, you know, but let's find out. I know someone. Do not sit there and um, let the, the, the um, elements of depression and stress weigh you down so much when you're thinking you're alone. You're not alone. You are not alone. All of us, our lives have changed due to this pandemic. Some people worse than others, but we are not alone. We face one common enemy, and that is COVID-19. And that has affected every facet of our lives. And in order for us to overcome, to overtake, and to conquer corona, um, the coronavirus, novel coronavirus, we need to be unified more than most. So one of the things we need to do, we need to talk to each other, right? We need to share information. We need to share best practices. If something is working for you, share it. If something is not working for you, share it too. You know, Blossom, sometimes we share the things that <laughs> work, but we don't share what don't work. We have to share what don't work because we could save somebody the peril of going through that. Right? So we have to share information. Then we have to be available, you know? Be available, especially in cases too, where, um, you know, two parents are at work. If you are a relative and you're home, you know, make it make it your life's goal to help out, monitor, you know, supervise, do something, okay? To help, do something without being asked, yeah? Be benevolent, be compassionate. And one of the things that would really, really help us through is if we get out of our selfishness. You know, this is not a time to be self-centered, but this is a time to be sharing and caring because, you know, um, coronavirus is not a respect of persons. Before we had, it was old people, we had highly risk now, very healthy people are coming down with the new strain of the disease. So as our students return, you know, to school, um, there was a lowering of the three feet. You know, some parents are very worried, you know, they're very nervous. So I want to urge you to continue to have the talks with your children because they miss each other and, and, and they're going to give bounces. You know, the elbow bounce now is famous. Continue to tell them to keep their distance. Tell them keep on their mask and tell them to empower their friends to follow the protocol because it's important to do so for their health and the health of the nation. So as we continue to do that and talk and reach each other, you know, and show compassion blossom, that is where true collaboration would be realized for resilience, all right, to take place. 
as parents, is it advised that I, let's say, schedule when me and my children would, would meet and discuss things? Or should I go whenever the need arises? Should I say, okay, once a week, every other week, we're sitting down on a Friday night and we're talking? Or should we say, okay, only when we have issues, we come together? No, uh, I agree. Yes, yes. Great, great, great one. I think it should be scheduled. In one of the first shows that I had, um, Joseph was the host. I spoke about uh, a vision board. I spoke about routine, right? And uh, this is an opportune time for me to rehash that. Routine is very key. Routine helps build resilience as well. Because when you know there's a routine, there's an expectation. And the expectation comes through care, love, and understanding. So if I know that every Friday night we're going to have family time and we're going to talk, you know, I look forward to that because it's an opportunity for the students to be brief, to share what was good, what was not so good, what should be developed, how can they improve, how can things change, and not only at school, but in the family structure as well, right? Um, Personally, I believe in daily debriefing, so nothing builds up and you're stressed, right? Um, I'm a mom and, you know, um, I am a practitioner of daily debriefings. I, I, I don't, you know, blossom. I'm a career woman, so, and this is a mental health field that I'm in, so I cannot not make space in my head for what's important with my family, right? Um, so I do daily debriefings. I do daily debriefings. I don't wait till the end of the week to debrief my son. Um, I've been doing it for 13 years every day. Now um, he knows the drill, so I don't have to ask, right? And then I'm debriefed too, believe it or not. Yeah, I'm debriefed too. And I think he debriefs me better than I debrief him. Maybe it's because he's had practice with me. But listen, you got to do this because when that stress level builds up and those stressors come and they pile on on you, you feel like there's a heavy sack of potato just bearing you down. Well, minus potato yams on your head. And that is when people start to fall apart. So before you fall apart, you must have daily debriefings. And don't ask the same boring questions. Ask things like, was your day good? And then you'll get an answer. Yes, it was good. Or no, it wasn't good. What wasn't good about it? Or what was good about it? If you had to replay today, what would you change? You know, what would you like to see differently happen? Ah, uh, questions like that blossom. Get the soul talk instead of the mouth. There are parents, unfortunately, who are not so present in their children's lives. And there are children, some children who feel like I can't talk to mommy or daddy. Either mommy or daddy don't pay attention or mommy and daddy might get upset or mommy and daddy don't care. How can these children who want to share, what kind of advice can you give them about being able to share if they can't share with mommy or daddy? Well, you have guidance counselors in the schools. You have a counselor. You may have a friend. Everybody has a friend. Some people choose the wrong friends. Some people choose the right friends. I would urge them to make a, make a great friendship deal, right? So there are some people who just naturally care and love you, you know, and, and, and you can talk to them. You can talk to them. Um, be very careful in and Larry of people who want to hear your business just so that they can berate you or use it as a reproachful stance. Be very leery. So children, you have, and you know that, because in the guidance curriculum that um, guidance counselors do, one of the topics is friendship. So most 12 and 13 year olds, even when they're in primary school, they are taught through health and family life and the guidance curriculum, they look at friendship. That's a major topic. So if you go through the points of that, um, what are the factors in choosing a friend? Okay. And you make a selection in that. 
you can share. But there are times when you want to share some deep seated stuff. And that's why you have your guidance counselors, you have your guidance counseling assistants, you have your clinical therapists, you have your um, psychotherapists, you have everybody available who can talk. You know, uh, Sally Blossom, we have a culture where people think, don't tell nobody your business, you know? Um, and what are you gonna do? That can't help you. And that is the, the mentality sometimes people have when it comes to counseling. But as you know, and the rest of the world who have engaged in this therapeutic process knows, this is a very, very, very effective way to go. And it's a very successful process. It's been around for over 200 years, right? Or more, okay? But 200 years maybe in, in an informal way. But the last 100 years or more, you know, um, psychotherapy and psychology as a practice, you know, has been one of the most awe-inspiring things, you know, that the world has had when it comes to dealing with mental challenges. So I would want our young people to know, you know, if mommy and daddy, they don't listen and they don't hear you, call your counselor, make an appointment at school and go and sit down on the couch and talk. Some people get a little mint, some people get candy, some people get water, eh? right? And that's not a, a token economy system, but when you sit in a comfortable place and you're able to share or bear your soul, there is nothing better than that because the soul has to be purged and cleansed. And there are many things that um, young people need help with, not just how to cope, but how to understand themselves. And that is the biggest thing we have, understanding themselves. So once they get the support to do that, um, they are clear to go and they're good on their way. Um, uh, Ms. Kofi, as we wrap the final thoughts on being resilient in this time, this ever-changing time, especially our students. One week we're doing Zoom, next week we're back in school. You never know what the following week may bring. Um, any advice on how the children can continue to adapt in this evolving period? Well, I want to urge them to look at Joshua 1, 8 and 9. And in Joshua 1, 8 and 9, this is a story where the Israelites were going through a challenging time. You know, the man they knew as their leader had died and a new, young, strong general took over. His name was Joshua. And in that transitional period, because he knew the man before him was strong, famous, and did many things that he probably would never get to do. He sought God's advice on how do I lead these people? who had a different mentality, a different thought process, right? And a different outlook on life. And you know, the word of God is rich and it encourages us in so many ways. And one of the things I want to share, right? Because I believe in its potency and I believe in its power. You know, Joshua was told to meditate on the word day and night, that you may observe to do all according to that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous and have good success. Verse 9 says, have I not commanded you? Be strong and be of good courage. Do not be afraid, nor be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Students, many of you who are listening, who have not started yet, I know hundreds of you know Mrs. Coffee's voice, and you know that I continue to urge you, do not be dismayed, do not be depressed, do not be despondent, do not be hopeless. You yourselves are seeds. And you know, once a seed is buried in the soil, which is a dark place, most people think, well, maybe it won't grow because the soil is dark, but they don't realize that light penetrates and once that seed gets the light and there's food in that darkness, you would see a seedling, you would see growth. And I want you to know that COVID-19 may seem like you're buried in the soil, that you are there and 
You can't see the light, but trust me and believe as the word of God declares, there is hope because the light of Christ will penetrate this situation and indeed it will bring you good success. I love you all and I thank you for the opportunity to share not just my career, but also my faith because I believe in you students, I believe in you parents, and I believe in the goodness of the people of this nation of Grenada, Caraco, and Kitty Monty. God bless you all as we traverse this journey and win. Thank you very much, Ms. Coffee. Appreciate it. There's one person on the WhatsApp that is noting they will take the advice of the daily debriefing. Um, as a teacher, it is very much needed. So definitely your words are helping a lot of people. So thank you so much for being our guest this morning. Appreciate it. Have yourself a good day. Enjoy. Thank you. All right. Clinical psychologist Shauna Cuffey, thank her so much. She has been giving us some tips on how to get through this time, these COVIDious times, and we appreciate it. I know a lot of people can use her words and her encouragement and advice. We're going to take a very quick break, and when we come back, it's time for this morning's Traffic Cam. This is Good Morning Grenada on Classic GBN Hot 98. between the Grenada Broadcasting Network and Just School Media. Take it away, Junior Checkway. So expect traffic delay, folks. Coming into St. George's via Bolio. Coming over the hills. You should expect traffic delay. See, folks, a lot of traffic. Good luck. Traffic coming into St. George's this morning, folks. So this is your Wednesday morning traffic cam. Good morning to all the listeners of GBN Radio, those on GBN TV. We are in Monge, and we see there's gridlock traffic coming into St. George's, folks, at a very slow pace. So if you did not leave home on time, folks, don't expect to reach to work on time because you have traffic delay. Especially those of you who are traveling into St. George's via Monge, Bolio, those of you coming from Grenville, over the hills, expect traffic delay this morning. We have traffic all the way past Hubbard's coming into St. George's. So this is your Monday morning, your Wednesday morning traffic cam, folks. Wednesday. 
why I keep saying Monday. So see folks, we had traffic from the, the intersection from Tempe and River Road all the way up to this area folks. Gridlock traffic and it's building up. So folks, expect traffic delays coming into St. George's via Bolio. So those of you coming from Willis, from Boca, from coming over the hills, expect traffic delay getting into St. George's folks. Because we see there's a buildup of traffic from the intersection, from the Tempe and River Road intersection, all the way up to Mungi. Gridlock traffic. And it's building up folks. So expect traffic delays this morning. So this is your Wednesday morning traffic cam. And motorists, the road is wet, so please don't hurry. Take your time on the road, folks. It's better to arrive safely than to get in an accident because you're hurrying to reach to work early. If you haven't left home on time to give yourself enough time for traffic delays, then take it easy on the road, folks. As we head into Bolio, but we see that the, the buildup of traffic is from the intersection where River Road intersects with Tempe Main Road. We see there's traffic there all the way up to Hubbard's Motors. Gridlock traffic, folks. So expect traffic delay getting into St. George's Force by a bolio so you're coming down over the hills expect traffic delay and the road is wet so this is your Wednesday morning traffic cam as we are traveling from Lotus Lane all up to Vendom This traffic congestion on the road. You see a lot of traffic going into St. George's this morning. So motorists, the road is wet and there's a lot of traffic. So please be cautious on the road. Before you leave home, check to make sure that your brake is working properly. So we are in bold your folks. approaching the Bolio Cemetery at Bolio New Life Church and we see a lot of traffic folks coming into St. George's see see what see see folks you see what could cause accident on the red road you see folks wherever you're tuning in from those from the UK those from London those from right here in Grenada this is your Wednesday morning traffic cam those in the US some from St. Lucia wherever you're tuning in from folks this is your Wednesday morning traffic cam just school media in collaboration with GBN as we travel into Vendom so we are in Bolio just outside Spice Basket and heading to Snow Corner. <coughs> we are approaching Snow Corner Junction. Welcome folks. 
Got to my folks from Canada. Sorry folks, but this morning my allergies is acting up so. Sorry about that. So we are at Snow Corner. Uh, we see a lot of traffic coming down over the hills to get into St. George's. So expect traffic delays today folks. This morning, everyone hurrying to go to work. They reach for 8 o'clock. But the, the black carpet is wet, so motorists are urged to be very cautious on the road this morning. Take your time. Be a defensive driver this morning. Wednesday, 7.45 a.m., we bring you Traffic Camera, a collaboration between the Grenada Broadcasting Network and Just Cool Media. This morning, traffic backed up all the way from the uh, the, the roundabout by Deco, Deco Gas Station. And here, the Gal gas station in Tempe Day, all the way back to Lamo Junction. I'm sure by now it's probably already started going up Bolio. So those of you traversing that area, be mindful that you could be stuck in traffic for a few minutes. Um, so keep that in mind. Um, we try to give you a, a morning report. I'll, I'll try to organize an aerial view. I'm, I'm interested in the aerial view of that um, that area when it comes to traffic cam. So Monday, please a lot. Hopefully, I'll link up with Junior and let's see what happens. So keep it locked. Thank you so much for tuning in to Good Morning Grenada. Always appreciate it. It's now time to prepare so to join the BBC Shubam. for the 8 a.m. newscast. Um, thank you so much. Have yourselves a safe, productive day. Remember today it is Umbrella Day. So walk with your umbrellas. The rain is falling. As Junior said, the black carpet is wet. It could be slippery. Be cautious. Be careful whether you're driving or walking. Be mindful of what you can um, encounter as the rain continues to fall today on Umbrella Day. Very very fitting in it the heavens know the heavens know well, have yourselves time. a safe and productive Wednesday be good be safe be COVID-19 smart have a good one everybody you know